Hello, you little nuggets. All right, so a um, few things to get through today. So I wanted to show you where we're at. So let's see. First thing is, I've uh, been doing a lot of fishing. Saved up a ton of money because uh, we were having some great spots. I finally bought a map, by the way. Um, and uh, let's see. It was down around about here. So this is where that campfire is. I'm setting up here. And basically, I'm fishing the float just around about here. We're going to go back out there later, so you'll see it again. You saw it in the last video as well. Um, and then the feeder rod is going out here. There are reeds and rushes that come out here, so the feeder rod is going here. The good thing is it seems to be picking up. Because my casting isn't good, sometimes it goes out here, sometimes it goes here. So we're catching, you know, sleepers and crucians and crabs, uh, crabs, <laughs> carps over here. And out here we sometimes catch some bream, um, and other fish and roaches and all sorts of things. So you get lots off of the feeder and then back in here, crucians, both gibble and, um, uh, gibble and crucians, um, sleepers, perch, all sorts of things and roaches. So this spot, fantastic. Cannot recommend it highly enough. The best spot I found so far, at least for the last three days, it's been on fire. Okay. So we've got lots of money. So we're doing well with the money. Uh, I mentioned that I got a free reel. If you didn't see the last video, you should watch it. I got a free reel off of a guy called Lefty. Thank you, mate. Much appreciated. Uh, and he also actually gave me the tip I should look into kits. So I've always thought, well, I go by the rod, go by the reel. So, but I never really looked at the kits. And then he said, you should take a look. So let's look at this, right? So let's say I want to buy a feeder rod. Uh, let's say I want to buy the Sorrento. It's 37. Right, and then I wanted to buy a reel, and I want to buy that same reel because I like this reel. These are good, the Lacerti, right? This one's 98. So that's 98, 37. It's 135 just for those two, right? But if you go to the kits and you buy Feeder Fishing Start, in this kit, <clears throat> you get that same uh, reel, which is 98. You get this rod, which is better. Karma Comfort. Let's look how much this Karma Comfort is. So this is a six, I think this is a six kilogram test. What's the name? I moved it off. Yeah, look at that. 6.5 kilograms low capacity. So look at this. Karma Comfort FD360. Let's have a look how much that is. Uh, feeder rods, Karma, Karma Comfort FD360. That's 83. So the reel and the rod is 100 and 180. And you can get a kit for a hundred and what was it, one hundred and fifty? And that includes the bell, the line. Well, I'll show you what it includes. It includes the the rod, the reel, the line, the sinker, a hook, and the bell. So it's a no-brainer. This is absolutely the way you want to go. This is better than the kit I was going to buy. So we're definitely getting that because we want to get two feeder rods. So done. So now we got that. So we've got 111 left to spend. So there's a few things we were thinking of buying. One of them was going to be the shovel. We were talking about getting the shovel because uh, I want to dig up worms. But the other thing is I also wanted to repair that reel that he gave to me. And I wanted to show you how one goes about that. So if we look at the reel, this is the reel that he gave to me. Oh, this is annoying. I wish I'd get rid of this thing. Okay, so you can see it's got, the main component's got 8.1% wear and it's going to cost... 6.75 74 silver to repair you can do the instant repair if you buy gold do the premium stuff and i don't know if you have a premium account if this faster i assume it is uh, or maybe it's instant i don't know anyway well that's instant i don't know uh but then there's lots of things that are wrong with this you might think that repairs the whole thing but you also need to repair the ball bearings the friction brake you need to add some grease and the spool, but you don't seem to be able to fix the spool. So I wonder if these are the consumables and this is just perishable. Like this just wears out eventually and you have to buy a new reel. Or maybe it's just not worn out enough. Oh, look, it says right there. It can only be repaired with gold coins. So unless you buy gold coins, you can't fix this. So for our intents, because we're not doing gold coins, yeah, that will eventually just wear out. So if we were to fix this whole thing, that would cost us 27, and it would take three days. That's in-game days. 
I'm not sure if the clock moves. We'll figure that out uh, while you're not playing. Um, but I want to get this up to snuff. I may as well, right? I'm going to buy a new kit. I want to get a new reel for... I have a new reel on my new kit. I want to get this one up. So I'm just going to do it. Boom. That's that done. So that's now being repaired. Uh, I'm going to quickly disassemble everything so that we have... You can see all of our gear. That's one slight thing that's annoying about this system is that once you've assembled a rod, you have to disassemble everything. Uh, oh, do I have it out? Oh, I do. You have to disassemble everything to see what you have in your gear, which is it's a little frustrating. I don't know. You should be able to see it regardless of whether it's assembled or not. Okay, so we have my new kit up here, which you can unpack. Ooh, not going to do that yet. I'll do a special unboxing video. No, I won't. Uh, we got four rods. We've got the Corona. Old spinning rod, which you can pick up from the first pond. There's a house there you can go back to every so often. I think once a day. And it just give you free gear. Oh, here's that reel. Okay. So this is the reel I was talking about that you get for free. And it's a fucking mess. Look at it. <laughs> Look at the repair this thing's needed. You'd be surprised, but this reel is still working condition. So it's good. You can literally go get from that shack on the first pond. You can get a rod, this reel, and crappy line and a crappy hook or a crappy spinner and just go out and spin fish on day one with the worst setup. I did that. I put it all together. I caught the biggest perch I've caught. <laughs> so, yeah, it's great. It's really fun. And it sounds crappy too. It kind of sounds junky when it's moving. I'm tempted to repair this. It's really expensive. I looked at it. Let me show you. I think it was like 70 silver or something crazy like that like it was way so not worth it to repair let's see how much is it repair 90 and it's so not worth it but i don't know i like that it's vintage i like the icon on it like not in this screen in this screen where is it look vintage it's kind of awesome um Anyway, we got that. We got some line here. Look, see, we got some 3.5. We got five kilogram line, which is going to be good for both of our feeder rods. Now, uh, we got some good line for our float rod. This is the old spinner I was talking about. We got lots of nice hooks now. I bought a couple of floats uh, actually because I broke a line while I was fishing. I got a a massive, a monster fish that snapped my my um, line and float. So I got a couple of new floats. I bought a bigger sinker that I didn't need bought it so I'm crazy I bought some maps so I don't screw you over uh, we have a bell we'll have another bell of course in a minute so we still have 83 left let's see what else is on the list oh we were gonna go and buy well with 83 left I think it's time we bought the shovel I hate doing it it's time all right we have the shovel we've got 45 left see the reason I don't like the shovel is look this particular reason here pick up can't use it can't use it with default energy you have to get more energy which is just so annoying okay um all right so we've done that we wanted to spend so now we have all of our gear that we're going to unpack the box actually let's unpack the box let's do that unpack after unpack you will not be able to return this product yeah we don't want that I was expecting some awesome sound of duct tape or sellotape or stripping. Oh well, okay. But now we got some uh, cool stuff. Where is... Wait, did it unpack? Hang on. Where's my rod? There's the Karma Comfort, right? But where's my reel? That's the one that's in for repair, right? Where's my new reel? Well, does it come pre-assembled? Oh, it does come pre-assembled. <sighs> Relax, boys. Everything's fine. <laughs> I thought I'd lost it. Uh, okay, well, it's good. We're going to leave it. That's how we're going to be using it. Um, okay, points. So I have two points to spend. Oh, they have this reset, by the way. You can only do it once. I could reset all of my points if I don't like where I'm spending them. Uh, okay, so where should we spend this? We're really into the feeder fishing. I'm hating where I'm casting. Doing it so bad. So I'm thinking... I have also been losing a few fish. I've noticed that. So I'm thinking maybe we could put... 
a point in this. A primitive bottom rig with a regular sinker. The technique of fishing with a simple bottom rig improves. The higher the technique, the greater the chance of catching the trophy. Well, we need that, right? But then what does this one do? This improves the casting, so we need that too. Paternoster rig. Uh, we have to have the skill level at 25. Right now we're at 18.1. Right, hang on, we'll come back to that. Skills. What else do we do? We're not doing much spin fishing. We'll do that later. We are going to be harvesting baits. And we are going to be cooking because we can't, unless we only buy, I'd like to make some tea so we can get our energy up. So, But we can make tea. See, we don't actually need anything skilled up for that. In fact, it doesn't look like there is any skill points in that. Okay. Um, harvesting baits, though. So we can... We can increase harvesting worms. A basic ability does not require any special skill. All you need is a good shovel and a little patience. Each upgrade increases the probability of digging for bait successfully. I mean, do we care about that? Are we just going to dig? Oh, look. We can skill up wet bread. I'll never go over that. Uh, what, how, what do you need for these? You've got to get your skill up. Well, that's going to take a while. Harvesting red worms. No, they come as they come. I don't want to waste a point on that. I'm just not into that. Making ground bait. I've used that. I don't know. Whenever I'm not hitting the fish, I just move. Maybe that's a higher level. I do notice higher levels using ground bait a lot. but um, And also, actually, as you level up, it gets harder to hit the fish. So you probably have to use ground bait. So we're between bottom fishing and what we haven't looked at yet is float fishing. So I've already, as you can see, put some points here because I really like float fishing. Uh, using a rig with a fixed line, what would that give us? That would improve the technique. This ability allows you to use a float rig with a fixed line. So we get that a little bit better. We're not using a spinning reel. Fishing with a telescopic rod, that's what we're doing. Pretty simple universal tackle, perfectly suited for unhurried fishing in limited space. That's me. This ability develops uh, along with the ability of fishing with a bolognese rod. Casting distance and accuracy 15%. Control of fish. So we're not so worried about the distance because I actually like that it's closer and it's about right. And the accuracy is already pretty good, but the control of fish. I feel this. I felt those three points. I felt a difference here. So I think we would feel that extra point, to be honest with you. So that's a possibility. That's a possibility. I've got two points. And then on bottom fishing, this would increase distance and accuracy, and this would increase the trophy. Okay, I definitely think we want to get this. I'd like to get a trophy. I think we're a ways off, but we need to start making inroads. So let's take one point there. We have one point left. I wish I hadn't spent two on spinning because I'm not feeling this. Anyway, uh, let's do the other one. It's either that or that. What do we think? Fixed line fishing technique, 10%. Let's do that because it's I like maxed things and we're close then. <laughs> do it. Done. There we go. Okay, so our points are spent. All right, what else do I have on my list? We spent points but fixing stuff. That's it. Oh, yeah. And then uh, I want to show you just um, a couple of tips that I've noticed. Um, one of them is, oh, the rig's not assembled. Hang on. Um, is in the use of the, uh, which float? Oh, by the way, I love this white float. You can see it way better than the default yellow one you get. Let's go with that crappy float. Right Let's go with a bit of wet bread. Pick up. Okay. So, the manual says that when you put the line in, to set the hook, you just do left mouse button. That. Okay? I don't think that works. That only works if the line is taut. Right, so for example, let me show you. There, I got lucky there. But now, if there were a fish on, that would set the hook, right? So I think 
what a good technique to do is to flick to the left or the right. right let's get this in a little bit closer. So if we got a bite there, what we'd want to do is we would want to flick the line away and when it got to about there, then press the button. But you kind of want to do it in a smooth move movement. You know what I mean? So your hand is basically move, click, move, click. And I've caught a lot more fish. It really does seem to be helping me a lot. So like if I were getting it here, it would be move, click. That's how I would be uh, catching the fish. And I've noticed I'm losing a lot less fish. Or at least when I do lose the fish doing this, I can kind of tell that it's my timing that's off and not my technique. Does that make sense? I hope I get one here. Because this, for example, if I just left clicked, I might miss that fish. If I just flick, why my mouse is moving so much but if I just flick my mouse first for like you know a tenth of a second just a few centimeters across my desk and then click left it will take up the slack and then set the hook and it seems to help a lot there's not gonna be any fish here are there yeah, let me get let me it's worth it let me go to a better spot Let me go down the southern bath. You notice I moved, I keep moving my picture around. It's probably getting really annoying. There's usually stuff right there. Okay, perfect. Look, we've got a bit of slack on the line. It's easier for me to flick left for some reason. I don't know why. Okay. Now, if I just click like the book says, like the guide says, I don't think I catch this. If I move and click, I have a higher chance. Assuming I'm patient. Like that. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> Fucking hell. Good timing, mate. Um, why is it bouncing back at me? That's weird. Am I doing something stupid there? It looks like it's going out and then coming right back at me. It is, right? Am I... Let's try that again. Click out. I'm at the, maybe I'm just too high. Oh, maybe that's why I missed the fish. He says looking for an excuse. Well, that's weird. Okay, I wanna try that again. Cause it has been working for me, definitely. It's, um, it's better. I'm, I don't know if this bit is true also, cause the other tip I had is that if you set the hook the opposite way to the way the float moves. In real life, that's obviously what you want to do, right? If the, if the fish takes it left, you want to flick right because you want to pull the hook back against its mouth. Otherwise, you're just popping the hook out of its mouth. I've been trying to do that. I'm imagining my strike rate has gone up. I don't know whether it really has. I'm also imagining that sometimes when I get my timing wrong and I strike too early, I'm still hitting occasionally when I shouldn't be. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but... Kind of feels good. It's more involved uh, behavior. You know what I mean? It feels like you're more engaged in the game anyway. So take up slack and pull. So just that action alone has really helped. Okay, and then one other tip I wanted to show you. Well, actually, I don't need to show you this, but I can tell you about it. So the bell, when you're doing the feeder bell. So I was letting the bell hit on the feeder line and then putting down my main rod and picking it up and reading it in, right? And I kept losing fish, not all the time, but enough that I was wondering, well, duh, that's just what happens. And I've noticed that the bell ringing actually doesn't always mean that the fish is on. I think what it means is that there's a very, very good chance the fish is on. But the more the bell rings, the better the chance. So the tip would be, just because the bell rings, don't rush to the rod. Like if you hear ding, 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 wait. Just, just wait a minute. Just wait. Just let it go again. Now you can pick up the rod. Right? Just let it take that line because I don't know if this is really happening again. I don't know what's going on in the code or under the water in the real world. Um, but um, 
it feels like if you let that bell, if you just grab it too early, it can pop out or they can release it too easily. So you kind of, once that bell hits, give it a, t give the fish a little bit of time to run. Obviously, if it's taking line, if the bell rings and the line goes out, the fish has got it, you may as well pull. But be a little bit more patient with the feeder fish. Just because the bell rings doesn't mean the fish is on. Wait a second. And I think that was it for the notes. Uh, so while you're gone, while you're away, I'm going to do some more fishing, try and get a bit more money in. I'm probably going to hit the next level, which um, fishing's going to slow down now. Where am I? Level, am I level 10? Level 10. Fishing slows down now. Level 12 is the next lake, uh, and I really want to show you that. If I can, I'll try and get to level 12 and bring you back here. Um, all right, you little nuggets. Enjoy your fishing. Bye.